Hi everybody and good morning to you. I'm glad that you have joined me for Story Hour this morning. My name is Mrs. Burns, but some of you that were in Mr. Tom's class might remember that he always calls me Miss Avery and that's okay too. I don't mind. I have heard that last week you were studying Moses in Godly Play when Moses took all of his people out of Egypt to take them back to their homeland in Canaan. It was a long, long, long hard journey. In fact, it took everybody 40 years. Can you imagine taking a trip for 40 years? Oh my heavens, what a long trip. But the Bible, which is where the story comes from, is a very, very long book too. And the whole Bible from the very beginning to the very end, and you can see how many pages that is, pages and pages and pages, is a journey. And also, many, 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 many people in the Bible take long, long journeys. But the special part of their journeys is that God is the one that told them to take those journeys just like God told Moses to take his people out of Egypt. And I think you might have heard a little bit about the fact that one of the experiences they had was they had to go over a great big huge sea. A sea is like an ocean, only not quite as big. And that took a long time and that was an interesting experience for them. Moses was a person in the Old Testament part of the Bible. The Old Testament was before Jesus was born. After Jesus was born was the New Testament. And one of the biggest travelers in the New Testament was a man called Paul. And you will study a lot about Paul later. We're not going to read this book today but it's a very interesting one. The first book I am going to read is called Oregon's Journey, and it is by, by a person named Rascal. The interesting about Oregon is, in the United States, where there are 50 states, Oregon is a state way, way, way across the country from us here. And so Oregon, the bear, is named for Oregon, the state. And this book will tell you a little bit why. The other thing I want to tell you about is Duke. You can see that a clown is riding on the shoulders of Oregon, and that clown's name is Duke. They both work in a circus. I don't know if you've ever been to a circus, but a circus is a kind of play where lots of different people and animals are in it. There are people like acrobatic acrobats who fly from swings. There are lots and lots of clowns to make people laugh. And there are a lot of animals and they do all kinds of tricks. But sometimes when the animals are not doing their tricks, they're not very happy with the way they have to live because they are in cages. So let's find out what's going to happen between Oregon and Duke. We met at a circus in Pittsburgh, Oregon and I, watching him from behind the red curtain I felt like a child again. After my performance, I would walk him back to his cage. One evening, Oregon spoke to me. Take me to the big forest, Duke. At first, I did not know what to say. I looked around and guessed that the big forest with pine trees and rivers full of fish were not nearby. We had to move on. Does that look like a forest to you? 
I don't think so. That looks like a big, big, big city. Miles later, Pittsburgh and the gray cloud city were far in the past. We bought two one-way tickets to Chicago. Chicago is another city in our country. 300 hamburgers later, my savings were gone. Have you ever eaten 300 hamburgers? Oh my goodness. You see Oregon here with all his hamburger buns that are left over? But I didn't mind. I was happy to make this journey with Oregon. My red hair blowing in the wind, I went through landscapes as beautiful as Van Gogh's paintings. Van Gogh was a very famous paint painter in Europe. We walked through hail, we snacked in cornfields, we snoozed in the warm grass, we dreamed under the stars. The birds were our alarm clock and steep streams were our baths. The whole world belonged to us. Carried by the wind of the Great Plains, with sore feet and my thumb pointed to the sky, we were on our way to the Rocky Mountains. Sometimes when people want a ride, they used to do this a long time, they would put their thumbs up like this and a driver would come by and give them a ride. You see the mountains coming in the back here? A traveling salesman, a hopeful actress, and a Navajo el elder took us further on our way. The Navajos are a tribe of Indians that live in the southwest of our country. But at dusk, that's at nighttime, we were so exhausted that all we could do is sleep. We spent the night in an old abandoned Chevrolet as you probably know, a Chevrolet is a kind of car, and they're very old ones. First thing in the morning, we hopped on a moving train to finish the last leg of our trip. With Oregon as my pillow, I dozed off watching the cows go by. See how they're on the train there? When I woke up, there it was. What is he talking about? What do you see in here that's different from when, where they've been? Maybe the pine trees? With just a few steps, Oregon forgot all his years in captivity. Captivity means when they kept him in the cage. Oregon in Oregon, I had kept my promise. I walked into the white morning, light at heart and happy. You think Duke was happy because he got Oregon where Oregon wanted to be? I think so. So I hope that you like that story of Oregon's journey which was a very long journey and at times very hard, but they both were really happy at the end. I have lots of books on trips, but I'm not going to read them all to you today. However, you know, people and animals aren't the only people or the only ones that take trips. Sometimes objects take things. The trip, things you can hold in your hand take trips too. In this book, which is called The Treasure Box by Margaret Wilde, the treasure box is what's going to make the trip. Do any of you have treasure boxes? I bet you do, where you keep special things like 
maybe a seashell or maybe a, a pine cone, things that you have found in your life that are very, very special to you. Lots and lots of people have treasure boxes and lots and lots of people have different kinds of treasures in those boxes. I am a librarian, which you probably know if you've been in the church library. So libraries and books are very, very important to me. The enemy bombed our town. And when they bombed it, the library burned down. See how, the, see how the buildings are all damaged? Charred paper, that means burned paper. Frail as butterflies fluttered in the wind. People caught the words and cupped them in their hands. Only one book survived, a book that Peter's father had taken home to study, a book he had loved more than any other book. Must be an important book. When the enemy ordered everyone out of their houses, Peter's father brought out a small iron box. This will keep our treasures safe he said. But we have no treasure, said Peter. No rubies, no silver, no gold. His father wrapped the book in a thick cloth and put it in the box. This is a book about our people, about us, he said. It is rarer than rubies, more splendid than silver, and greater than gold. Peter and his father journeyed with the others, fleeing the city. Behind them, their houses all burned. Don't you think that must have been very hard and sad on those people, having to leave their homes because they were burned down? Look at all these people. For weeks and weeks, they trudged through mud and rain. They slept at the side of the road under hedges, in ditches, huddling together to keep warm. As the days went by, Peter's father became ill. He whispered to Peter, you must be brave for both of us. Promise me you will keep our treasures safe. I promise, father, said Peter and he gripped his father's hand through the long night. In the morning, the other people helped Peter bury his father and say goodbye. That means that his father died during the night, and that was very sad. Leave the iron box, they told him. We have a long way to go, but instead, Peter left his suitcase behind and held on to the very special treasure box. By the time he reached the last village, Peter's arms ached. He knew he would never be able to carry the box over the mountains. At the edge of the village, was a cottage with an ancient linden tree. We used to have a linden tree at the church too, but it got rotten and we had to have it carried away. Peter chipped away at the frozen earth under the tree and buried the box. Here it would be safe from the bonds and the fire. During the following years, as Peter grew from a boy to a man in a strange new country, he often thought about his father and the book he'd loved more than any other. Can you see how Peter is growing? You see him, can you see at the end of the page over here that he's a young man? When it was safe to return, 
He journeyed back to the cottage at the edge of the village. He saw a little girl playing in the garden. He told her about the treasure under the linden tree. She helped him dig up the iron box. Will I see rubies and silver and gold? asked the little girl. Peter opened the box. Oh, she says, it's only a book. This is a book about our people, about us, Peter said. It is rarer than Rudy, rubies, more splendid than silver, and greater than gold. Peter took the iron box back to the city where he had lived when he was a young boy. This is Look the same as when he left on his journey? I don't think so. There was now a new library with new books. He put the book back on the shelf where once again it could be found and read. And loved. That's my two stories for today. I hope you enjoyed them, and hopefully we will meet again for another story hour. Thank you for being with me today. Have a good day and a good week. Bye.